So, what's your mom like? She works at Umbrella. She's making an important new medicine. Umbrella? That big pharmaceutical company? Now that we've had gameplay hands-on time with both Leon and Claire's campaigns in the Resident Evil 2 remake, it's a bit of an understatement to say that we're excited for the full release in January 2019. After playing a section of Claire's campaign set in the underground beneath the RPD station, in which she meets Sherry Birkin, fights another Birkin, and meets the creepiest cop in town, Chief Irons, we got to chat with the director and the producer of the Resident Evil 2 remake, Kazunori Kadoi, and Tsuyoshi Kan about changes they're making, things they're keeping the same, and how much fun they've had playing around with fan expectations. Here are seven new things we learned about the Resident Evil 2 remake from them. Also, quick shout out to our sponsors Huawei Honor Play before we get into the video. Right, let's get to it. It's closed. Oh my god. So how exactly are Capcom rearranging the story of Resident Evil 2, given that the remake is no longer following the A and B scenario layout from the original, which essentially meant there were four different storylines to play through? Well, director Kazunori Kadoi says, We've taken out the zapping system and so rather than having two different stories per character, each now has their own campaign, the Leon campaign and the Claire campaign. I think there are iconic scenes throughout where we know we can't change them up a lot because they are part of the essence of what makes RE2 such an iconic game. But some of the bits in between that are not necessarily stuck in anyone's memory, I think we've got a bit more freedom to go a bit more intense on the changes and make things fresh. But I think even though now there's only two campaigns, it's still a game that has two sides to it. So you've got Leon's perspective on events, and you've got Claire's. There's definitely an aspect of you'll want to play both campaigns and see the story from both sides, and there are certain parts that you'll really only get once you've seen both sides of the story. Given what we've played so far, especially what we've seen of how Claire's campaign plays out, it's clear that some story beats have been rewritten. How did Capcom decide what to change and what to keep the same? We're basically respecting the outline of the original game, following the same key beats of the storyline, but we're trying to make it fresh for people who know it off by heart by recontextualizing some parts, says Kadoi. So maybe some characters might appear in some surprising times or places during the story, or events might have a location change or bring a new perspective to it. We know that there will be new fans, new players who are seeing things for the first time, but existing RE veterans will probably want something that's not entirely a retread of the original, so a word we've been using is nostalgic. It's nostalgic and new, familiar but fresh at the same time. Producer Tsuyoshi Kanda added, We've been asked whether or not Hideki Kamiya was involved with the game, Kamiya being, by the way, the director of the original Resident Evil. Too. He hasn't been directly involved, but Mr. Kedoi knows him quite well, so he met up with him and kind of got his blessing in not holding back and making what we wanted to make, and to just go for it. There's a moment early on in Leon's campaign that lets veteran players know they can't trust their memory of the original game to keep them safe from every scare. Producer Kanda says, All of my work is fun, but it has been really interesting to be like, everyone thinks they know what's going to happen here, and changing things up. Flipping the script on people is a really cool thing to do. There were some points where we'd be like, okay, they're supposed to be an enemy now. The first liquor encounter is a good example. You might have seen from parts we've already shown, but people expect the liquor to show up in a certain corridor. And in that corridor, fans almost instinctively look to the ceiling. But then, it's not there. But there are some hints, like there are claw marks on the wall. There's definitely a feeling of, I thought I knew what was going to happen, so I thought I was safe, in a way. But now, even if you're someone who knows the game well, suddenly your heart is pounding because you don't know what to expect, and we can scare you all over again in that way. I think this is a cool way to make sure older fans don't get bored or don't get too comfortable. Plus, it's a great way to make sure that new and old fans are sort of on an equal level where potential scares are concerned. During Claire's recent gameplay demo, she meets the young Sherry Birkin for the first time. In the original game, Sherry's first words were, help me. In the remake, her first words are, you need help. You need help. 
We asked Capcom whether this was intentional and why, and whether rewriting dialogue is something they've wanted to do for all the characters. I'm really happy you picked up on that, Kiroi told us. Taking Sherry as an example, she's a character who in the original game was a little girl. She's very childish. We wanted to add depth to her now. And because you're looking at her in a more photorealistic environment and all the characters now look more human and more realistic, that means we have to have more depth to them narratively, so that they're a lot less cartoonish and two-dimensional. Back in the day, Resident Evil 2's storytelling was revolutionary because games didn't have stories, or horror games didn't have stories. But we have to meet up with fans' expectations now, coming up to 2019. This Sherry is definitely someone who feels like she has her own personality and her own motivations. We're trying to take some of that stuff that feels or looks slightly unnatural and add depth to it. And that goes for other characters too. As always, we're keeping our cards close to our chests about exactly who has changed and in what ways. But that's a really great example of one way that the storytelling has been modernized and brought up to date. Not good. David! Margaret, you there? Wow, both of my parents are gone. It's just me and my brother. Oh, I'm sorry. Some fans, and I'm mostly talking about myself here, have been disappointed by the fact that Claire's outfit has changed for the remake. Instead of the pink sleeveless biker jacket paired with pink denim cutoffs worn over bicycle shorts, she now wears a much more modern looking leather jacket with jeans. But why did Capcom change it? We did actually start off by bringing her classic costume straight into the RE engine, Kadoe explained, but it just stood out. The graphic level of detail at the time, the number of polygons on the characters, and just the general standards of the day meant that for then it was fine, but it really stands out as being a bit odd looking now when you put it into a modern photorealistic setting. We just decided to make her look like someone who, give or take the fact that she's a main character of a video game, would not look so out of place walking down the street in this outfit. Probably somewhere a little bit more fashion forward. All that said though, she does retain some details of the original design. Instead of the colourful Made in Heaven logo on the back of her original jacket, she now has a similar pattern, but it's subtly stitched into the leather. There for fans looking out for it, but not so over overwhelming that it draws attention away from the action. It's more authentic to have that embossed, subtle effect on it rather than a giant colourful logo stamp, so we just wanted to bring a little bit of believability to it while maintaining the iconic silhouette and iconic look of the character that's still there, Kadoe explained. The Resident Evil 2 control scheme has moved away from the clunky tank controls of the original, but kept a little bit of the old school tension by having guns be more accurate to aim while players are standing still. It's a great compromise between old and new designs, preserving the atmosphere while bringing things up to a modern standard. We know that in this day and age, comfortable controls that are reasonably conforming to standard expectations, where people can port their muscle memory across different games and franchises, is really important to gamers. We've been pleased to see people responding well to the balance of controls, but I think it's also important that once you've updated the controls and made it smoother for the player, you need to update everything around it too," explained Kadoi. If we gave you this smoother controlled experience compared to the RE2 original and then put the exact same zombies in front of you, you'd just zoom past them and be able to blow them all away because the zombie hasn't been updated to match your newfound comfort with the controls. So whether it be updating enemy behaviour and also level design, like how wide the corridors are to let you move around with the new controls, all those aspects have to be brought up to date to form a coherent whole. Producer Kanda added, I think it's because the camera has moved to over the shoulder, but people have been asking, oh, is it an action game or are the controls like 4, 5 and 6? But if anything, I think the controls have become comparable to Resident Evil 7's aim and shooting controls, and it feels similar to that. That's an intentional choice on our part. It's a really great balance balance and a good place to be with the controls. Like if you've played the Claire demo and you've tried the G boss battle, it's not just a bullet sponge boss. It's actually got this element of G can burst steam out of pipes, your vision gets restricted and you're having to dodge away and find exactly the right time to shoot him. I think that those controls really play into letting us do really great things. Kanda's right there. The G battle didn't feel like I just had to empty clips into him before he went down. It was something that, at certain moments, you had to stop and think about, while being absolutely terrified, of course. 
Finally, I had to ask Kadoi and Kanda about other characters, one that I ran into during Claire's demo and one that we've only glimpsed in silhouette during the Resident Evil 2 Remake E3 trailer earlier this year. First off, Chief Irons showed up during our time with Claire and he's just as horrific as ever, perhaps even more so. Chief Irons is definitely a character you love to hate, Kanda said, and that's the same with the development team. He's popular among us and he's been fun to bring up to date in this game and definitely appears more than he did in the original. You'll see a bit more of him. Director Kadoi added, he's pretty gross, but hopefully you'll get a chance to give him what's coming to him. And about everyone's favourite bitch in the red dress, Ada Wong, the pair were remaining tight-lipped, but seemed excited for us to finally see more of her and what her updated look will be like. Ada is someone you'll have seen briefly in silhouette in the E3 trailer. She's in there as a little hint. Certainly, it goes back to the same thing of what will look natural to wandering around in a photorealistic environment. Wandering around in that dress and getting on with your job as a spy probably doesn't look quite as seamlessly realistic and believable as we wanted to. So exactly what we've done with the design is something we're still tight-lipped on, but safe to say we won't betray your expectations. So no red dress? What will Ada be wearing instead? Answers in the comments. Oh! <laughs> what the hell is that? Are you excited for the Resident Evil 2 remake? Or is there anything about it that you're still a little bit curious about or unsure of? We can't wait to play it, so make sure to subscribe to Eurogamer for more RE news as we get closer to launch. Before we go to the end cards, here's a little shout out to our sponsor Huawei and the Honor Play handset for partnering with us to bring you our usual steady supply of videos. The Honor Play has been made with gaming in mind, so you might fancy checking it out in one of the links provided below. If not, no worries. Maybe click on one of the videos on screen now to see more from us. Either way, thanks for watching. Bye! <laughs>